we have had quite a few Hinoki cypress. When I say quite a few, nearly 200 of them. These are specially grown trees that we commission. So they're contract grown and I'm going to turn them into bonsai. So we're not selling these. We sell the small ones as raw material, but the bigger ones are so hard to get. I've been trying to source them for the last 10 years haven't been able to manage but over the last three years we sourced it so we contract grew them so we've got about 200 of these just walk through with me and you will see in different sizes and I'm going to have a field day I'm going to have so much fun making bonsai out of hinoki cypress so these are all hinoki cypress and the Hinoki cypress is characterized by these lovely shell-like foliage. I will show you what big trees look like because the Hinoki is quite a big species and in the species there are many different varieties. So this is this particular variety that we have ordered about 200. It's called Camicypris obtusa nana gracilis. That means it's a dwarf form and very graceful. So they have this very tight growth. It's also sold normally as a dwarf conifer. Although we say they're dwarf, they don't stay dwarf. I've had some in my field, which I will show you. They've reached about three meters in about 30 years. So they're not really dwarf. So I won't hang about. I will just pick anyone, which is some of these branches already broken. Um, and we will make a bonsai out of them. So, I will take one of these. Okay, we will just take one. So we will take that to the back, but I will now talk about how the Hinoki looks like when grown unchecked. Now, this is also a Hinoki cypress, and there's a very special story to this tree. This tree, as you can see, is about six foot tall, 1.8 meter tall. But if you come closer, you will see how big this tree is. It is massive, absolutely massive. And Hinoki's normally grown in Europe are grafted onto ordinary um, uh, Leylandii stock. And the root stock is usually very ugly. So this people normally carve it. So it's like a twin trunk, trunk style. And I first acquired it in 1980 from a nursery in Godston, not far from here. And I grew it successively in bonsai pots and when I came here to the nursery in 1986, I put it in the ground and it's been successively moved from the ground into these big pots. And I'm going to work on this one day to show you what can be done to it. If you come around the other side, you will see the beauty of this tree. I think the potential front is on this side, but it's absolutely massive. A number of people have asked to buy it, but I'm determined to work on it to make it into a lovely bonsai. So, such a powerful tree and it's going to be a large bonsai. Come around this side, you can even see it better because I think this is the potential front of the tree and it will remain as a twin trunk bonsai. So this is the nature of Hinoki, absolutely splendid. And I have a bonsai pot big enough for this tree. So this is going to be an exciting project, but that's for another day. Now let me show you some other Hinokis to show you how they grow when they're left unchecked. So this is 30 years of growth, but the tree I reckon must be about 45, 50 years old. So I thought I'd show you these Hinoki cypress. These big trees, five of them, are imported from Japan about 25 maybe years ago. And as you can see, they are absolutely straight trunks. And this particular variety, I don't think it's the one that the Japanese grow as timber trees, but you can see the habit. They tend to grow very, very straight. It's an ornamental variety, very similar to the obtusa, but it's not the nanogracilis, but it's certainly one of the uh, obtusa, dead straight trunks. And they make beautiful trees. So I was hoping to grow them into garden trees or to make it into a grove even in a big pot. But I have also air laid the trees at the top here. You can see where it has been cut. 
and about five six years ago I aerated the tops of most of these trees and made small bonsai from them which undoubtedly people buy so I don't have them anymore here. So this one is If you earlier the top, you get a lovely tree, and you still have a lovely trunk. So this is the habit of the normal inoki, which we imported from Japan many years ago. And this is not the same as the nanogracilis. I will show you some large nanogracilis, which we grow in our field as ornamental trees. So let's go there. So this is another Hinoki cypress. This is the Nana gracilis, the dwarf Hinoki cypress. So although it is dwarf, you can see it's already about 10 foot high, three meter tall. And like all these grafted Hinoki cypress, you can see it's got the bulbous graft at the bottom. So this tree was planted here when I made the pond in 1990. So this tree has been growing here for the last 31 years and I reckon this tree would have been 20 years when I planted it. So this tree is about 50 years old in real age. So 50 years, it's only not that much. So you could say that they are dwarf trees. I've got a few more there, that's in the distance there. If you look at that tree, that's a Hinoki cypress also. These were pruned in another video I did a couple of years ago. Over here, that's also the Nanagracilis, about 10 foot tall. You see what a beautiful habit it has. It has a beautiful conical shape. So that is the Hinoki Nanagracilis, grown as an ordinary garden tree. And if you come close, I have taken quite a few air layerings. But those air layerings are not as easy to root as the ordinary Acer or Hornbeam air layers. I have found that although they air layer, they sometimes can take more than a year. I have even found that there was an occasion when some of these took two years to root. So I haven't bothered to open the bags yet, but I hope they will root but they are very slow in rooting. So I will try and see how these plants behave when you air layer them. Obviously, they're not as vigorous as the grafted trees because when you graft onto Leylandii stock, they grow at a much faster rate. They grow at a much faster rate. So we will see. Now, to my right here, this is also Hinoki cypress. This I also brought from Japan back in the mid 80s. When I used to go to Japan every year, we used to bring about two containers of trees. Now this Hinoki is the Hinoki which is used in Japan as a timber tree. All the construction work, all the houses, they use the Hinoki as a timber tree and for making all the shoji screens. And you can see why they use Hinoki, because it's got a very straight trunk, absolutely straight trunk. So this is the Hinoki species which is quite a big species con uh, comprising many different varieties. But what I'm going to work on today is the dwarf uh, Hinoki cypress, Hinoki cypress, which is Camisipris obtusa nanogracilis. So we'll have a go at doing that one. We're grown in the open ground and the soil is a very clay soil, but all very rich soil. And the trunk is quite nice. A tree like this would be at least 20 years old. They are very, very slow growing. Each year they only make like an inch or two of growth. And considering that they're grown in the ground, it should have thickened much faster, grown much uh, more vigorously. It's still a slow growing plant. And large Hinoki cypress are very hard to find because they are slow growing. So, let us see what we have here. There's nothing like working on these nursery plants because 
they have so much potential. Sadly, one of these branches have broken, but you've got to take the rough with the smooth. And although it's broken, it's not the end of the world. And because the Hinoki Cypress is such a rare tree, I will use these branches for making air layerings. And if I can just give you a few tips about air layering, most evergreen conifers, like juniper, they grow best from heel cuttings of this semi-hard wood. And the ideal thickness is about the thickness of a matchstick, this thick. That's what we call a heel. The heel is when you tear it from the wood. You tear that from the wood, that's called a heel. So that's called a heel cutting. And that's what roots most easily. If you were to just do a nodal cutting, a nodal cutting is when you just cut at the node. So if you cut just below a little shoot like that, that's called a nodal cutting. So that also roots. And you dip it in hormone rooting powder or liquid. And these should root in about two or three months. So you'll get some nice small plants. So not anything wasted here. And of course, although that branch broke, it's not the end of the world. I still have a lot of uh, usable branches left. As always, the graft may be ugly, but again, not the end of the world. When trees are grown in the open ground, they produce branches willy-nilly all over the place. And because in bonsai we are trying to make the image of a tree, we try to keep the thin branches to use as the usable branches and have a fairly straight looking tree. This is by no means the thickest of all the Hinokis. We've got Hinokis which are much, much thicker than this. I will look at some of those as well. Now, these branches here are very usable branches. So I can see straight away that as I proceed up the trunk, I will get a nice tree out of it. And it's got quite an interesting line. The line is always important for any bonsai. If it is absolutely straight, you can make it a formal upright tree, but if it is always just straight and nothing else, um, it may not be so interesting. Now, I notice here that this is a very thick branch. So I've got these which are more usable. So I may not use this one, but rather than cut it off to the trunk, I will just leave a bit of that and see if I can use this piece as a wireable branch. So you can see how I'm going to make the choice of branches. If that is usable, then this is too close. I'll take this off. That is usable. This is usable. This is usable. This is getting a bit thick. So straight away I can see that this is a very usable front. This side, not so interesting as a front. So usually the front or the back dictates itself. I'm trying to now locate the apex of the tree. This is a possible apex, but let me see if I can use the entire height. Now, again, I've come across a very vigorous branch here very thick branch and if it's too thick the chances are that they are not so usable so I will take that very thick branch off so you can see what a thick branch I've taken off so lots of cutting material I have here and the rest is now just wireable so it's not too difficult from here on 
So with just a little bit of work, I can see myself producing a reasonably nice tree. So, let's proceed by doing some wiring. This is two and a half mil wire. I mentioned the grades of wire because many of you have asked me to tell you what wire I'm using. Although, mind you, the size of wire depends on how flexible the branch is, not necessarily how thick the branch is. So I'm going to do again two branch. Decided to go around the trunk to stabilize the branch. Subsidiary branches need to be wired as well to make the pads. I find from some of the feedback I get from viewers, some people have sent me pictures of their attempts at making bonsai. They either don't prune enough, or in many cases, they prune too much, and they end up with a tree that has hardly any branches. So do go a bit easy. Don't go over the top. Don't go over the top and uh, cut everything off. There's always a middle way. So with this species, the most difficult thing is being able to obtain these plants. That's where that branch got broken. So if you notice what I do, I don't draw a picture. I don't try and envisage what the tree is going to look like. I've always said that there are people who do their bonsai creation in that fashion, but that is not my way of doing it. Not that it's wrong, it's just that I have a different approach to doing my bonsai. So I just let the shape evolve as I go along. So this branch is coming up like that, so rather than bend it flat, I can just wire these branches like that. So you don't always have to make everything flat. Again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of using the right grade of wire for each particular situation. I, I'm not trying to sell wire, but many people come to the nursery and just buy one grade of wire and they think that's going to do their bonsai. You will not be able to get by with just one grade of wire. You need at least three, if not four different grades. 
So here I'm using two mil wire, which is the most popular size wire. So I find that the most popular or the most often used grades of wire for most people's bonsais are one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three. And if you get into bigger trees, then possibly four or four and a half. But those grades, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three are the most widely used wires. If you're lucky enough to find Hinoki Cypress, then by all means grab it because it is a very difficult tree to source. I will talk about the repotting when I come around to doing it. Because you can see this is growing in virtually like a clay type soil but you see how healthy the tree is growing nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that Not many people get obsessed and think that everything has to be bonsai soil straight away when I put this up I'm going to make that transition very very gradually okay now I want to give a little twist to the top Although, I'm not sure if I need, need it all. Okay, if I'm going to use the entire trunk, I might as well do a bit of trunk splitting. Trunk splitting is such a useful technique. It makes the bending much easier. So, for those of you who don't know what a trunk splitter is, let me just remind you, that's a trunk splitter with a narrow blade and it comes together like that. So, it makes an incision like a jaws of your teeth crunching together and you split the trunk completely through and through. And that helps to bend the trunk more easily because the wood can slide over each other. So if I'm going to wire the trunk, I could either stick the wire in the soil and go up the trunk or I could link it there. No, I don't probably want to link it there. It may hurt that trunk. Oh, I might do that. I might do that. So I'm just pro providing an anchor. So although I talk about two branch principle, two branch principle is just a means of anchoring the wire. Simply anchoring the wire. Once the wire is anchored, then you can proceed with the rest of the wire. So that's anchored the wire. Let's see how much I need, I'll probably go up there. I should really be using my wire cutters. I'm so used to using my felcos that I sometimes prefer to use felco. Okay, so remember when you wire, keep the wire really tight, really, really tight. If you don't keep it tight, then there's virtually no point in wiring. Try not to trap branches. And have the spacing fairly even. hope you all have a turntable. We sell quite nice turntables 
aluminum ones which are like the pottery wheel but for large trees there's nothing to beat a heavy duty turntable like this if you have small trees they're okay but larger trees okay okay i've kept that wire in case i want to manipulate it i will then do that And a word of warning this species of tree can be brittle so don't press your luck too much if you feel it giving way then go easy on it okay the next branch is there let me proceed up the trunk okay i'll proceed up the trunk so i will do a Double coil, like so. straight away this is redundant I want space between branches so I don't need that find usable branches so these are usable branches long like this about four to six inches long the lesser branches if I see a potential for using it at a later stage I will also leave it but let me wire the usable ones first I think this will do. the back of the tree
realize I trapped one or two small branches, so I'm undoing the wire to do it again. You see, I trapped some branches there, which was not nice. Because the Hinoki cypress or this obtusa nanogracilis is an ornamental tree, you will find it quite uh, accessible in many countries. I remember when I visited Canada and the United States some years ago, I did go to some plant nurseries or garden centers, the equivalent of our garden centers, and I came across quite a lot of very nice looking Hinoki Cypress. So those of you who are in the United States, don't be disappointed. You can find these trees available in nurseries. Because they propagate quite easily from cuttings, except that they are slow growing. At the moment the tree has a lot of foliage but once I get rid of some of the foliage you will begin to see the tree. Now I'm removing some of these little branches from around the trunk because they are hiding the trunk and if you can't see the trunk it doesn't look like a tree so as soon as you start showing the trunk it begins to look like a tree. By the way, for those of you who live in the UK, over the Easter holiday weekend, I'm going to have a Heron's Open Day. I hope this will be broadcast in good time. And I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations and I'm going to meet UK fans or fans who are able to visit us for an open day. And I will do demonstrations like this and you might even get a, one or two free trees. So look out for the notice on our website so the Heron's Open Day is going to take place over the Easter weekend. So I'm bringing the curve this way and then back on itself like that. So what we call the dancing girl type of image. And then I will decide what to do with the top because if the top is too dense, I may need to thin it a little bit. Now this is a little branch, I may just keep it because you never know, it may grow into a usable branch later on. So we'll keep that little one, while very carefully, I must admit that many of these branches are very brittle, they break from the trunk very easily so they can be hard to handle. So I'm going to do like an open coil, not tight round this one. This is for the future. It's just to guide it along. Just to guide it along. So this is still the front. You can see how the tree is evolving as I proceed. And that is the top. I'm lucky that there's so many branches that I can pick and choose what I will keep and what I will discard. Really beautiful tree. It's a single trunk tree. Many of these nursery trees tend to have multiple trunks. I will find some multiple trunk situations and we will deal with those as well so we will have a range of different styles i recently did a video on the buronensis multi-trunk but that turned out to be a single trunk when the tree was completed 
So watch out for that video. I've got so many videos in the pipeline, so you're gonna have a treat because I've been busy doing quite a few videos recently. So we've been working non-stop without a break. I'm taking the tip out. I don't want to remove too much, but you can see the shape of that tree. Let's take the top off there. So I don't think that was more than like 20 minutes. And we've managed to produce this. Now let me go the whole hog and show you how I deal with the roots. So let's have a look at the root ball. And as I did warn you, look at the soil. If you come close, this is virtually clay. You could even make pottery uh, objects with this. It's almost like pottery clay, very clay soil. So, but it's a fertile soil. Don't get the impression just because soil is clay, it is not good soil. Plants do well in that. And I noticed that already the grower has cut off some taproot. There's a massive taproot that has been cut off there. I won't cut it just yet. Let me see how much I can get into it. The danger of these situations, I haven't come across any fine root yet. If you remove all the soil, it can be detrimental to the tree. You could be knocking off a lot of the fine roots that are embedded in this clay soil. I've got to be so careful now making the transition. When I make the transition to putting it in a pot and using something near to bonsai compost, I got to be ever so careful. People get carried away and they knock off all the soil and they wonder why the tree dies. They see a lot of these pictures of some demonstrations where in Japan, established bonsai, which are already growing on a bonsai pot, they jet it with a jet of water and they wash virtually every grain of soil off and then they start all over again. I still think that it is a dangerous practice outside of Japan. The Japanese know what they're doing. But if you're in a different environment, those sort of techniques may not work so well. And also the aftercare is very important. You've got to make sure that you provide adequate aftercare, like in a greenhouse which has got a lot of humidity, to sustain the tree after you've done that. You see, I, I haven't found a lot of fine root yet on this tree. I've come across this great big tap root which went into the ground, and the grower obviously chopped it off when digging the tree up. I may plant some of these back in the ground just to generate more root in our soil. So I'm being ever so careful, ever so careful not to remove all the soil. I know they're falling away in lumps but I still have to come across decent fibrous root. So, how shall I pot it? I'm going to put it in a very generous sized pot because I don't want to cut much root at all. I want to retain a lot of the root. I will cut more root next year or in subsequent years. But I think if I cut too much root, the tree will suffer. The tree of trouble is these tap roots not helping me get it into that plastic training pot. are in the cupboard behind you, Peter. Oh, 
though these are stiff roots, there's always temptation to cut it off, just to sit it in the pot. I'm going to use this pot. I know it is very much over potted, but don't forget, this is what we call the transition. I want to stimulate the generation of roots. Let me tie the tree firmly so that it doesn't rock about when the roots are getting established. I am, in fact, being a bit impatient. One of my colleagues standing next to me has said, why don't you use a deeper pot? In fact, it's a very good point because the roots are tending to go deep. It may be better to use a deep pot at this stage. So if I were to use a deeper pot, the logical thing to do would be to put it back in a flower pot like this. If you put it back in a flower pot like this, then there will be lots of opportunity for the tree to produce uh, many side shoots but I'm being a bit impatient which is not really my style I'm usually quite a patient person <laughs> but I'm going to do a halfway house and put it in a deepish bonsai pot like so knock off most of this clay soil as much as I can and I'm going to mound it so you notice that the tree is not in the ideal sort of position. Because this soil root ball, the clay root ball, I don't want to disturb too much. And I'm going to tie it with heavy wire so that it doesn't rock around. Now let me prop the tree up. So the mixture of views is composted bark, some akadama, and some volcanic grit. I'm using more bark than the, ac the akadama because I know that bark is a very good compost for most conifers. I do vary the compost with the different types of trees. So let me repeat again, why do we tie trees in? We tie the trees in so that the trees don't fall out of the pot. And we tie the tree in also because if you keep rocking the tree in its pot, the roots won't get a chance to get established. Every time a new root forms, they could break if it is rocked about. So that's why we tie it in so that they don't fall out. So there you are, that is the best I've done. It's only a temporary pot. After all, these are called training pots, you know, bonsai training pot. Hopefully in a few years time, we can get it in a much shallower pot when the tree has produced more side shoots. So there you are, in about half an hour, 45 minutes, is all it took to produce one of these. I will look at some more, uh, but whatever I do in the future, I will probably have to bear in mind that with this sort of root ball situation, one has to be very careful how we remove the soil from the root ball in case it breaks the fine roots. So this is another lesson that uh, you may have learned. Of course, not many trees nowadays are grown in the open ground. Most nurseries nowadays grow everything from small to big in flower pots, and so they use proper potting compost. So growing in the open ground is considered a very old-fashioned method, but very effective method. So there you are. This is an example of a Hinoki cypress made into bonsai. The Hinoki, Camisipris, Optusa, and Nana Gracilis. 
So hopefully we'll find some other examples which will be different from this one. There you go. So this is series two of the Hinoki Cypress. And look at this marvelous bush. So bushy and lush and full of foliage. And you must think that this is a massive tree with a massive trunk. But let's see what is inside it. I've removed the hessian and let's have a look. And if you bring the camera close, on closer inspection, okay, the graft is there, quite thick. There are several thick branches here. One, two, three, three at the base. Then it forks there, it forks over there and goes higher up. Uh, and there's a lot of confusion there. So you could easily turn it into a bonsai. I know that give me half an eye and can make it into a bonsai, but I'm wondering whether it is really worth it because although it looks a bushy tree, most of it is branches. And when you remove the branches, you are left with a trunk which is barely an inch thick. It may be about two inch thick at the base, so this is a very difficult decision for me. What do I do with a tree like that? Shall I convert it straight away into a bonsai or should I wait? Uh, so, as we say in bonsai, you do have to exercise patience from time to time. So, for this particular one, because it's going to be a waste just to chop off all these branches to reveal the trunk, I'm going to do selective pruning and put it back in a flower pot to see what happens. I'm going to remove this so that I can make cuttings from it. I'm going to let some light in. I might even, no, I don't think I need even to give it rudimentary wiring. I will just put it into a big flower pot. So this is where the expression discretion is the better part of valor. I know there's always a temptation to show off, but what's the point of showing off? There's no point in showing off. So let us give it another year to see how it develops. And meanwhile, if I put it in more of a PT type soil, bark type soil, I shouldn't keep saying the word peat. I use peat synonymously for anything which is a compost. Now peat is almost non-existent. Hardly anyone uses peat nowadays. For any of you who are wise guys trying to catch me out, we don't use peat now in the nursery. We use composted bark. So this is what we're going to do. So. So again, I'm going to just explore the tree a bit. The object now is to get it to produce lots of fine roots into a more of a standard type nursery compost rather than this nursery soil. This clay soil is very rich, but for the purposes of pot plants, this soil will be difficult to sustain the tree in a pot. If I were to plant this tree back in the ground and grow it as a garden tree, then that's no problem using this soil because I know that the roots will spread in for the rest of the soil. But if it is to be put in pots for most of its life, I think I need to change the type of soil. So this is what we call transitioning. And over a period of years, as we transition, we'll go back deeper into the root ball and remove more of this clay soil at a later stage. But I don't want to do it all in one go. If I were to do it in one go, that would be curtains for the tree. The tree would die. So that's as much as I'm going to remove. And we're going to use a very... Uh, I wouldn't say peaty, I keep using the term peaty. It's not peat, it is just a composted bark. So it's professional bark. So we're using a type of bark soil. So that's what we use.
and while they're growing in this pot I could still do a bit of wiring so all is not lost it's just that the transition from one side to the other would be too drastic and that's why I've chosen to do that so most of the hinoki that we bought will have this treatment where we are just trying to transitioning the soil with this So I hope you're not disappointed with what I did because I did actually make a bonsai. But this is a case where I'm looking to the future of the tree. Looking to the future rather than just uh, making bonsai just for the heck of it. Because I know that if I were to make it into a bonsai, I would just end up with a bonsai with a very thin trunk. It wouldn't do justice to the tree. So leaving these as sacrificials It'll help to thicken the trunk much more. And then when the tree is ready, in a couple of years, I will work on this tree. So that's the treatment I give to this particular type of tree. <laughs>